Oi, pessoal. Aqui é a Alexia. Bom, antes de começar, eu queria falar umas coisinhas aqui com vocês. Nós estamos preparando coisas muito bacanas para 2020. Então, a cada mês, nós teremos um challenge diferente, ou seja, um desafio. Pelos 12 meses do ano que vem, nós vamos ter desafios sobre temas específicos que vão te ajudar a melhorar o seu inglês. Por exemplo, nós vamos ter challenges sobre phrasal verbs, sobre prepositions e como aprender gramática sem precisar usar livros didáticos. Vai ser muito legal, a gente está super animado com isso e queremos muito, muito, muito que você participe. Então, se você é sério com o seu inglês, você deve participar dos challenges. Para saber mais sobre esse e muitos outros assuntos, vá lá no inglesnecru.com. Ok, now on with the show. Oi, pessoal! Hoje eu venho com uma surpresa, uma novidade muito bacana. Hoje, só hoje, dia 20 de maio de 2020, o Cambly trouxe 15% de desconto nos planos mensais. É pela primeira vez na história que eles estão fazendo isso. E claro que a gente não podia deixar de vir aqui e avisar vocês, né? Então é excelente para quem quer experimentar melhor o Cambly ou até praticar donas de quarentena, que convenhamos, está todo mundo na mesma e nada melhor do que fazer agora. Agora é a hora. Então os códigos são mês de inglês ou mês de inglês kids, para quem tiver uma kid, uma criança de até 15 anos de idade em casa. Os links vão estar nas show notes, é só você acessar por lá ou ir direto no cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly e colocar esses dois códigos de acordo com o seu interesse. Então vamos lá, mês de inglês para adultos maiores de 15 anos de idade ou mês de inglês kids, tá bom? É isso. Então vai lá, aproveita. 15% de desconto só hoje, dia 20 de maio de 2020. Vale muito a pena. Aproveita. Now, on with the show. Hello, hello. Hey, guys, and welcome to another episode of English no Cru Rádio. Once again, I am here with my friend, colleague, and co-worker, Felipe Ardcardo. <laughs> Felipe, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing well. So today we are going to continue our conversation about online education and learning. And today, Felipe, I'm putting you on the spot and I kind of want to flip the script and let you ask me some questions. So this could be about anything, but... Ideally, we will address the topic of a lot more people are learning online right now. So what do we think that looks like? How can we help them? What advice can we offer? That kind of thing. But naturally, we can take this conversation in whatever direction that we, that we fancy. Sounds good. Okay. To kick it off, Felipe, what are you going to talk about? Okay. I have a question for you. So get started with this uh if you could choose just one thing to learn just one thing what would you learn for the rest of your life right you're really going to master it but it has to be one thing okay wow starting off with a difficult one so you're talking about one life skill how specific or how broad can i go because i want to say like I could say music and all instruments fall into that category. Do I have to be more specific? No, no, it can be like either music or coding. It can be that. Okay, I have a good trick answer to your difficult question. If I could just learn one skill, I would want to master the skill of learning how to learn. That's good. <laughs> so... I really think of that as like the meta skill, like the one skill that rules them all, like the one ring that rules them all. If you know how to learn, 
you can apply the same principles, the same ideas, the same techniques to essentially everything. Like, obviously, that looks a little different if you are learning how to play piano or you're learning how to speak Russian or learning how to code Python. They all have different flavors of learning. But the process is very similar. And the skill set that you need is very similar. Like learning how to build skills and develop and cultivate new skills, that is a skill in and of itself. So I think that's my answer, learning how to learn. That's good. Very smart. <laughs> Let me throw that one back at you. If you could master one thing, what would it be? Why? Okay. You know, I love computers and I love the internet, but I think I would choose survival. And by survival, I mean like how to build a house, how to garden, you know, like to actually grow food that I can eat and to be sustainable and go back to the basics because I feel like we know a lot of things. There is a name for that. I forgot now that, for example, I know how to code a little bit, but I don't know how a zipper works. There is a name for that. You know, we have this collective intelligence kind of. So I know a little bit, you know a little bit, and it feels like we know a lot. But if we have a pandemic, no, I'm just kidding. If we have a very bad thing happening to the world and we have to go back to the basics, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't grow my food. I can't build a house. Too soon, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah, so I would say survival. Okay. So survival skills. And I imagine you're talking about more along the lines of how to sustain yourself if you needed to, not like a, you're not a prepper, like someone that's buying land in an underground shelter in New Zealand to survive the apocalypse. Ah, uh, no. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. There, have you seen this YouTube channel? Oh God, what is it called? I'm blanking on the name right now, but it's just a guy in the woods and he has no materials and he builds like houses. He builds arrows to kill stuff. You have no idea where he is. If he's on like an island or in the woods, in the rainforest, you don't know. He never speaks and he has like millions and millions of followers. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I know. I think it's called primitive. Yeah, primitive way of life. Something, something like, that. like that. No soundtrack. No nothing. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, but I agree. That's a great skill set to have. So, a quick story. You, I don't know if you know this, but when I was a little boy, I was in Boy Scouts. So I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a Boy Scout, still am. I'm an Eagle Scout. That's the highest rank of Scouts. Humble brag. But one time <laughs> we were going on a scouting trip, and I did not know this. I was probably like 10 or 11. But we went to the woods, and normally everybody like builds their tents, and then you're staying, and we have a campfire. But in this trip, we were doing a wilderness survival activity so when we got there they're just like okay everyone go in groups of threes and you have to build your shelter for tonight and we'll see you at noon tomorrow and i was like what the hell <laughs> i was so scared so me and two of my friends we had to just go out in the woods and find a lot of sticks and build a little house <laughs> it rained all night and it was really terrible and still difficult thinking about it so those are good skills to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And recently I watched that TV show you told me about, Home. I think it's called Home oh, yeah. on Apple TV+. Plus. Yeah, do you like it? Yeah, I love that, especially the house in Sweden. So that's why I was thinking about how to be sustainable and grow my own food. Yeah. Do you want to explain that show just a little bit for our listeners? Yeah, it's... I, well, the first and the third episode, I, I got it. I didn't really get the second one, but basically they are showing different houses around the world with different concepts. And yeah, 
Yeah, you probably can explain it better because <laughs> you got me to watch it. <laughs> no, that's essentially it. Um, yeah, it's just interesting houses and people that build houses across the world. And most of them do have like a new concept of like how to be more sustainable or more environmentally friendly. But yeah, it's a beautiful show. I recommend it. Yeah. And I have another question for you. So now we don't, we don't have to choose one skill to learn and master, but we kind of have to choose some, right? Because we are stuck at home. We, we're trying to deal with their emotional state and mental health. And we both know that learning helps with that. So what did you choose for this period? Like when it started, I want to know that. So right when it started, so I'm like, okay, I don't know how this is going to last. How long this is going to last. And right now, did you change something about that perspective? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So when it started... Um, so I first came back to the U S on March 10th, I believe, which was essentially the day where all of the travel bans and travel prohibition started. So at first I didn't really recognize the magnitude of the pandemic. It wasn't even called a pandemic at that point. So I was thinking, okay, maybe I'm going to be at home for a couple of weeks so I started with just like restringing all of my guitars and I traded one of my guitars for a different guitar and I was just playing more music thinking, okay, this is a good opportunity to kind of brush up on my guitar skills and try to improve something that I already know and already, you know, just try to take it a little more seriously. And then when I realized like, oh shit, I'm going to be here for a long time. This is not going to pass quickly. Then I found an old banjo in my dad's like storage place. And I learned how to put that together. It was really fun. So I recognized I really liked the banjo, but my dad's banjo kind of sucked. It, I didn't really play very well. It kind of broke. So then I took the plunge i made the jump and actually bought a banjo and now i'm heavily invested in trying to spend as much of my free time as i can here learning how to play the banjo does that answer your question it does it does because i think we went from okay there's something going on so we have to stay home and there was this can you say honeymoon phase where people were actually cooking and <laughs> baking you know, bread like drinking and wine every day yeah <laughs> And I think every single company, company, is perfect, right? perfect. It's not company, but company, company. Okay. And they were, they had their services for free. You know, it was kind of a honeymoon phase. That's what I like to call because people were happy. They were doing different things. <laughs> right now, I think we were past the spirit and now it's getting more serious, even though some countries, they're going back to business slowly with some restrictions. I think we still don't know exactly what we're doing. So what would you recommend to people? So they probably went through the same phases just like we did. They started, they were trying to learn a lot of things, hopefully English, and now they have to deal with everything and still keep learning and trying to make the best of their time. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic question because I do think Brazil is a little bit behind most of the world in terms yeah. of just when the coronavirus started affecting Brazil heavily. For the first time, we're happy to be behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it's a dark but true joke. Um, yeah, so what I would recommend... Okay, a couple of things. First... This is not going to help our business, but I would recommend doing something that is unrelated to your work and preferably either if you have the opportunity to go outside, that's wonderful, or the opportunity to like work with your hands. Mm -hmm. I think that's just very therapeutic and Obviously, all of us are looking at our cell phones and our computers all of the time. Most of us are working at home online, and then we're checking the news and 
on Instagram the other 23 hours of the day. So if you have something, like for me, it might be banjo. For Felipe, it might be meditation. For some people, it might be drawing. For Alexia, it's flowers. If you have something that kind of separates, that's distinct from your work, life, and pandemic worries, I think that's really beneficial. That is my first part of my answer. Okay, part two. This is something I've been thinking about a lot. When a lot of people are getting into self-learning for the first time, and like we've said, all online learning is essentially self-learning. You can have the best course in the world, but you still have to be disciplined and motivated and force yourself to do things. I would try to create the smallest feedback loops as possible. So you can learn information, you can test that information, and you can get feedback on how you're doing and how you can improve. So in my case, I can watch a video about the banjo, about a new way to play the banjo. I try some drills. It's really hard. I stop for an hour, then I start again, try it again, rewatch the video, and it's a constant feedback loop until I can actually do what I want to do. And you can do that with almost anything. You can create and set up feedback loops. And I just think that's really important. That's the end of my rant. <laughs> that's great. That's great. What about you? What would you recommend? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't think I'm in a position to recommend anything. <laughs> yeah, no one is, but... What I've been trying to do is to create, create a lot of different things. And again, I think we talked about this before, but I'm trying not to expect a result by the end of the day. So like longer projects, longer things. When I say project, it seems like work, but it's not. It can be something like gardening, you know, we can plan something, wait a few weeks or at least a few days to see something happening. And I'm trying to work on that. So it's not it's not a skill. It's more like something related to my mental health, kind of. Yeah, the most important skill of all. Yeah. So I think that's what I've been trying to do lately. Just try to be more chill with everything. But still like being productive, trying to be productive, but trying to be more patient, kind of. Yeah, I, that makes total sense. I totally agree with that. And on that note, you said you're trying to create things. I think this is really important right now. I imagine we've talked about this before, but the idea of creation versus consumption. As humans, we are consumers. We consume a lot of information. And most of the time, we do not create things from that. We just consume. And right now, most of what we're consuming is really exhausting and it's really bad news and it will leave you tired and anxious and scared about the fate of the world. So I think now more than ever is an important time to create. That doesn't mean you have to start a startup or learn how to code or learn how to play banjo. That could just mean writing in your journal or, I don't know, going on a walk for me is an act of creation rather than consumption. Um, you know, talking with a friend on the phone. That's creating connections. So just to try to point the balance more towards creation and less towards consumption, I think that can be really beneficial not only for learning, but also your health and life during these difficult times. Yeah, absolutely. I even wrote about that. So I like to write. So I wrote, I was writing this piece about how it's okay to not be productive, not to be productive as everybody on the internet, because I think I've never seen so many videos about people trying to sell you things and <laughs> saying like, you can use this time to invest your money or do something. And I started this text saying like, this is not, normally it's not true. Like we have our mental health and we have to be kind to ourselves. Alexa says that all the time. I think she, she knows way better than both of us. <laughs> Yep. That, but then I realized that creating doesn't have to have a final product. It's more like some people are painting, some people are drawing, some people are writing or 
whatever. And then we can look back in two or three years and see how beautiful all of the things we created were, you know, in times of uncertainty. Absolutely. And I would add to that, I think that's a very important point that you don't have to expect a result. So it's not like at the end of this quarantine, my English is going to be a C1 level or something like that. But you do have to really get into and fall in love with the process. So if you're studying English and you find an English podcast that you really love, you can listen, you can binge on a lot of episodes. And if you like that process of listening to English or reading or something like that, that's good enough. You know, you got to take it easy on yourself right now. So I would just say find something that you like, fall in love with the process and just do it. And the results will come eventually, but you don't need to be that worried about it right now. Yeah, and I wouldn't say just right now. Maybe we realize it right now. <laughs> yeah. But when you look back, we're always trying to do this so we can do that. Like, at least me, it was always living in the future. So if I work more, I can save money so I can work less, you know. And now, just a great time to see that something bad is happening, but we can see. I'm not trying to romanticize anything, but this is my take. <laughs> yeah, I think this pandemic is showing a lot of things that we do poorly like a lot of things with sanitation like oh even after a pandemic i should definitely wash my hands more or like, yeah exactly so what alexia said the other day like when you buy new clothes at a store she said she would never wash them she would just put them on it's like you know i'm definitely going to wash that you know that's could exactly. be dangerous so yeah some good things can come out of bad times. Absolutely. Cool. Awesome, Felipe. I think that's a good place to stop for today. I really appreciate the company, the conversation, as always. And we will be back in your ears sooner than later. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do nosso Inglês Micro Rádio. Quando eu falo nosso, eu realmente quero dizer eu, Foster e vocês, né? A gente faz isso tudo pensando em vocês. E, além disso, nós temos produtos feitos para vocês lá no nosso site, inglêsdenicro.com. E lá você vai poder ver os challenges, né? Nós temos um challenge novo a cada mês. Quando que Sound School vai abrir de novo? O que, que nós estamos planejando para esse mês? Tudo isso você pode acessar lá na inglesnecru.com. Vale muito a pena. Nós temos muito orgulho do novo site. Tudo está funcionando direitinho. Então, vá lá, deixa seu e-mail para você saber as nossas novidades. O que, que a gente está criando desse lado. Então, é isso. Dei meu recadinho de final de episódio. Espero te ver no próximo. Então, é isso, hein? Bye!